It ain't just wide open. It's W. F. O. Hey, this is Jeff uh, Rice, uh, Stephen Hawk from up by Savannah, Georgia. I just wanted to let you guys know that WFO rules. Joe, this is Jay Bird, truck driver from Big Bear, California. WFO rocks. Oh, don't forget. WFO rules the airwaves. WFO! Come on! All right, we are going to get started with our post-race media availabilities here at Texas Motor Speedway for today's AAA Texas 500. We are joined by our second-place finisher, Ryan Blaney, driver of the number 12 Acela Carlisle Ford. We are also joined by our sixth-place finisher and playoff driver, Chase Elliott, driver of the number 9 Kelly Blue Book, Book Chevrolet. We will open up to questions for these two drivers. Please raise your hand down here in the media center. We'll get a mic- microphone to you, or we'll get to you up in the press box. We'll start in the front with Jeff. Jeff Clarkson, Jeff Clarkson. Jeff Clarkson. I can hear you. Yeah. On the last restart there, I mean, once he took the top, did you feel like he was going to have the advantage that he did? Yeah, I figured he wouldn't make uh, that move three times. Um, you know, we almost cleared him the first restart up top, and then I did this, the second one, and um, I figured he'd take the top. and. And the 42 gave me a heck of a push, um, but I didn't quite get far enough ahead of the, the four into one. If we would have went in there and he was kind of on my right rear, I would have been okay. But we went in side by side, and if I sailed it off in there as fast as he did, I would have just got loose and wrecked his bolts. So um, I, you kind of knew you're beat getting into one when you're there because you know the guy on the outside is going to pin you. But, um, yeah, I've – Figure when he took the top, it was going to take a really big push and, and a good position into one to have a, a prayer at it. It just uh, didn't happen. Um, yeah, I mean, when someone someone beat you on there, the, the top actually wasn't bad in one and two on restarts. I feel like you could roll pretty decent, especially on the front row when you had no one in front of you. But um, yeah, I mean, you, you almost get beat one, you get beat the next one, you're you're going to take the top, and uh, you're not going to restart on the bottom. Honestly, it's a really vulnerable spot being on the bottom. Someone can just pin you however hard they want to and get you real loose. So I figured I knew he wasn't going to do that. We're going to go upstairs to the press box for, I believe, three questions. Um, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire Service. Chase, um, basically, at this point, you've got um, got a situation where you pretty much have to win at Phoenix. Your last two starts there were second and third. Um, do you feel pretty confident going in there, having that one goal in mind? Uh, I mean, yeah, I feel better about Phoenix than I did about today, for sure. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know until we get there. But, uh, yeah, tough, uh, you know, tough spot to be in. But ultimately, I mean, you gotta, you got to be in a must-win situation at Homestead if, if you ever make it down there. So you might as well get used to it and like it. We'll stay upstairs. Uh, question for <clears throat> question for Ryan Blaney, Wolfgang Monzer, Rangeport Press Agency from Germany. Uh, Ryan, yesterday evening we had just heavy rain. In the beginning of the race, did you feel any difference in the grip level? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Um, you know, I went down to one the first lap, and I about spun. I about did what the twenty did yesterday, and then the I think the fourteen and the eleven got into each other. Uh, it was it was pretty slippery, especially when you were in the first couple rows and you were really sailing off into one. Um, so yeah, I, I thought the first little bit, uh, you could feel the track kind of be greasy and not a lot of rubber on it. And then it, it came in and, um, got pretty, pretty dark, but, um, yeah, you could feel the heavy rains and what it did to it. We'll stay upstairs, I believe. Is there another question in the press box? Do we have any additional questions downstairs for Chase or Ryan? We'll go back to Jeff. Yeah, I mean, just Chase, it, it looked like it was really hard to pass out there in general for everybody. I mean, is, is it was it as hard as it looked? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I don't know what genius decided to pave this place or take the banking out on one and two, but uh, not a good move for the for the entertainment factor, in my opinion. Do we have anything final for our two drivers? All right, gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Good luck next week in Phoenix. All right, we're going to continue with our post-race media availabilities here at Texas Motor Speedway after today's AAA Texas 500. 
We are joined by Tony Stewart, one of the co-owners of Stewart Haas Racing, and today's winning team, the number four Mobile One Ford with Kevin Harvick behind the wheel. We will open it up to questions for Tony. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start in the front with Bob. Bob Pockers, ESPN. What were you thinking at the start of overtime after Kevin had dominated that race for so much and it, there was a chance it could have slipped through his, through his hands? Well, I think I was more worked up over the fact that, you know, he lost the lost the lead there on the restart before that so uh you know but as you sit there and watch and when you can run when you can run his you know ryan's pace and be that close to him you know that if he gets by in clean air he's he's a lot faster car so uh you know when he got the lead back it was, at that point he'd been through two restarts where he restarted on the bottom and almost lost the lead on the first one then lost the lead on the second one so he knew he was gonna pick the outside lane at that point and would probably uh, probably be all right, but you know he hadn't restarted out there the whole day, so uh, you know you you never know for sure what's going to happen. But at least at that point, you give yourself a better opportunity, knowing how you know Ryan had the outside figured out on that restart before. Additional questions? We'll go to AJ. Right here. There's one coming behind you, AJ. Hey Tony. After what happened today with uh, with um, Jimmy's team, them getting a penalty they shouldn't have gotten. Um, can you talk about the communication, if, if there's any issues when those things arise and whether, and if you'd like to see a, a better system in place where you can talk to officials? What was the penalty? Uh, we got um, basically the, he, he, they, NASCAR thought he failed inspection three times. It was only twice, and that wasn't communicated. I'm still not really aware of it. I mean, I, I came in this morning, so. I don't know. I still don't understand why we have to worry about failing three times. It's like you, you bring your car, you roll it through tech, you either pass or you don't. I don't know why we screw around and jack around with one, two, three times, and it's it's ridiculous to me. I mean, it's it's the only series in the world where you got to you get to go through tech three times and fail twice, and they still let you go through a third time. It's like just it, we we got to figure it out. It's got to make it simpler than this. It shouldn't be this difficult. So I I half the time you don't even know what the penalty is supposed to be and and i don't i'm a car owner and i don't know what the penalty is supposed to be so as a fan i don't know how the fans can keep up with it either but it's you know it, the, the first if you start rolling cars through one time and if they don't pass they go to the back i bet you there'd be a lot less cars fail tech the next week but who knows so i i'm with you i think it needs to be a less complicated uh, way of of doing it for sure we're going to go upstairs to the press box for two questions. Uh, yeah, Wolfgang Onzer from Germany Rangeport Press Agency. Uh, Tony, just a personal question for you um, to find out what's the role with your team. Is it, are you also involved in technical decisions? Are you attending briefings and give uh, your own experience concerning car preparation for Kevin's car? Oh, God, no. I don't want to go to any briefings. I just want to show up at the races and go to the shop and hang out with the guys. So that's part of Wolfgang. That's what retirement's for. You don't have to go to meetings. So I go to enough damn meetings as it is. So I, I try to <laughs> limit how many I have to go to. But definitely the the uh, post-race meetings on Monday or Tuesday when, when they happen, uh, you know, it doesn't do me any good because I'm not making any of those decisions on that car, obviously. And you know, it, ironically enough, I mean, somebody was asking me about certain aspects of the setup this morning, and, it, and it's just amazing how, you know, we're almost at the end of two years being outside of a cup car from driving and, and how much has changed in two years of how we set these cars up and what we do to, to make them go fast. It's totally different than when I drove. So for me to sit in those meetings, uh, you know, they might as well be speaking Spanish. I, I wouldn't – I really don't understand what they're talking about because – so much has changed in such a short amount of time and that's that's just technology in the sport you know the technology changes weekly so you can imagine two years down the road how how far uh you know the technology and setups and and uh, you know how they set these cars up has changed and, and evolved in two years we're going to stay in the press box for another question no habla espanol yeah exactly you got it <laughs> uh, on a happier note can you Talk a little bit about Donnie winning his 10th championship and what that says about him and what it says about your organization. I'm, I'm so proud of him. I mean, it was nice last night to, to finish the season with a win. 
Um, the only sad part about winning the race here tonight is that I was actually going to try to get out of here and, and try to fly back to Charlotte to to get to at least his portion of the banquet tonight. And I'm not sure if I'm going to make it or not, but I'm going to do everything in my power to to be there because I think a tenth championship is is really special and. Uh, you know, it's um, you know this is an era in sprint car racing where everybody has the same equipment. It's just a matter of the driver and crew chief and those two crew guys uh, on the car that that make the difference. And um, you know, for him to have been the dominant driver like he's been these last you know ten twelve years, it's uh, it's impressive to see. And uh, you know, couldn't be more proud of him. Do we have any additional questions for Tony? We'll go to Dustin up here in the front. A couple of questions, Tony. First of all, from from a, a racer's point of view, the, the the move Kevin made, the winning move. I know you weren't on this track with how challenging it was, but can you kind of give a, a perspective or sense of what he had to go through to to make that type of a move it, on the restart lane? Yeah. You know, I think you know the restarts that he had led all day. I mean, every time he took off on the bottom, it worked out all right. But you know, I think as the race went on, that, that second groove got better and better. And, uh, you know, it's like he said, and, you know, we could see it, obviously. I mean, about the start-finish line, that side draft started really playing an effect. And, you know, if you didn't clear that outside car, uh, by the time you got there, that, that car was even with you or even ahead of you by the time you got to turn one because of the side draft. So, you know, it's um, – I'm sure there's a little apprehensive apprehension from his standpoint of not restarting in that lane all day and not really knowing exactly what to expect. But – you know the the what second restart before that you know Ryan almost cleared him and then the, the next restart he does clear him so I mean you gotta at that point you know realize that that lane's got a lot of potential and uh, you know even if you even if you don't uh, get the lead off of it you at least got to try that lane you know you, you can't give him you can't give Ryan Blaney that many opportunities to perfect that restart on the outside like that so uh, you know it was you know Realistically, it's kind of a no-brainer decision that you have. You just have to make that decision to, to change whether you're comfortable with it or not. And great to celebrate the win, no doubt. But you've got three other cars. Uh, how do you look at their positioning for for next week? And and you know, just a couple weeks ago, you guys were celebrating having all four cars uh, in the in the round of eight. At this point, you'd only have one make it to Miami. How do you kind of look at things at, at, at this point going into Phoenix? Well, I think even before the first playoff race started, I mean, you realized that, you know, you had the big three that were most likely going to be the, the first three in that chase. And, you know, that there was going to be one spot open when it came to get to that final round of four. So, you know, just the fact that we were able to get all four of them to the, this far is, is an accomplishment and, and a huge year for our company. So couldn't be more proud of everybody. But the reality is we knew that, you know, everybody knew when when they started the, ch the the playoffs that those first three spots were already, for the most part, taken unless they had a natural disaster happen. So, I guess from from our standpoint now, I mean, we got one in. Um, there's one more race left, and we got one more opportunity to get one more of those three in. So, um, but no matter what, it's um, you know it's been a record breaking year for our company in so many ways. I mean, there's so many different records that have been broken that um, you know it's. You know, if Kevin's the only one that ends up in there, it's still been a great season. And, um, you know, but I still feel like that we've got three really good race cars and, and race car drivers and crew chiefs that do have an opportunity still uh, to, to pull something out at Phoenix next week and, and get locked in. So, um, you know, it'd be nice to have 50% of that equation again going into the Final Four. We're going to come to Mark over here on the left next to me, Tony. Uh, Mark Garrow, PRN. Sort of a follow-up to that question. With Kevin in and as – as strong as that team has been almost everywhere all season long, would you pencil him in, no matter who's in the Final Four, the favorite going into Homestead? You know, I don't even know how you have a favorite. There's, there's just – when you think of the reality of what Homestead is, I mean, there's just – you're, you're loading all your chips into one race, so you never know what can happen. I mean, there's still 40 cars in the race. There's four of them racing for a championship. There's 36 guys that can – make a mistake and and change the outcome of the event so uh you know i i don't know that anybody's a favorite really when you go when you when you get to that final race there's just so much that can happen um you know but i i, I like the fact that we got kevin harvick there i mean it's that's a guy that 
I, I don't, you know, I don't care who he's up against. I mean, that's the guy that you kind of want with the ball in the bottom of the ninth. So, and I feel like we got three other guys that, you know, may not be exactly that guy, but they're really close, and and they've closed that gap from from last year to this year. So, um, you know, I'm comfortable with who we've got in so far, and and I feel like if we uh, can get one of those other three in, that they got just just as good a shot, you know, going into to Homestead as Kevin does. Do you have anything final for Tony? Go in the back to Janine. Janine Klaus, Gertz and Scuffs. Would you elaborate a little bit on what bringing Eric in has meant to the team and what you've seen, what kind of growth you've seen in him since he's joined your team? Well, he definitely doesn't fit the typical TS, or not a TSR, but SHR uh, driver mold. Normally you got to have a little bit of an attitude and be stubborn and hard-headed, but, you know, he, he comes in and he's the one that's, always calm and, and excited and uh, you know I, I think he's just been a really good fit you know with those three guys even though his personality isn't the same as the other three uh, we've seen how it's kind of gelled all four of those teams together just by bringing him in the organization so um, you know I I've said from day one when when we hired him and everybody uh, I laugh because it makes me feel really good when people said I was crazy and couldn't understand why I hired Eric Amarola and I said you just have to be patient because I promise you he can run up front and win races. And, you know, we we as a company took him out of two opportunities to win with loose wheels and stuff earlier this year. So, uh, you know, he's been in position to, to run for wins four or five times and had miscellaneous things happen, whether it was a speeding penalty or loose wheel or whatever that were getting wrecked on the last lap that took him out of a chance to win the race. So, um, but he's just one of those guys that he he's a company guy and, and – you know, he came in with the right attitude. He, he's like, what can I do to help? And, and he's just kind of been like a sponge in an open book of, you know, doing whatever it takes to, to learn the system, uh, to be a good teammate to those guys. And I think that's really – he single-handedly kind of just pulled everybody together and, uh, you know, really tied the four-car aspect of it together for the, for the organization. And we have one more up in the press box with Chris. Yeah, Chris Frank, uh, Tony, I know you weren't here yesterday, but you guys have an opportunity to get two series championships this year with Cole making it to Homestead in the Xfinity Series uh, run. How important was that win for Cole yesterday, not only for himself, but for the team? And do you guys like your chances for Homestead? It was huge. I mean, uh, you know, last year he missed it by, I think, uh, three, three points or three positions on the racetrack and then went out and dominated Homestead. So... Um, you know, if he would have got those three spots, I mean, he, he would have been the champion last year. So having that opportunity, and, and I think it's a great spot for Colt to uh, to go there knowing how fast he was there last year. I think it, it'll give those guys confidence uh, after Phoenix leading into that week and, and hopefully make it a little easier from the stress standpoint. But, uh, you know, if, they, if they're half as good as they were last year there, they, they have a very legitimate shot at winning that championship. So uh, we're really proud of them. I, mean, I think I think Cole just keeps growing and getting better. I mean, it's a, you know, it's it's a process. I mean, and you never know how long it's going to take somebody to get to their full potential. And I don't even think he's reached his full potential yet. But um, you know, we we see things in him that that uh, you know show that growth and that improvement. And uh, you know, yesterday was a good example of it. And you know, now that we've got him in that position, um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens when we get there. But like I said, if he if he runs as good as he did last year, I think we got a really good shot. All right, Tony. Well, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the win tonight. Thank you. All right. We are going to wrap up our post-race media availabilities for today's AAA Texas 500 at Texas Motor Speedway. We are joined by members of our race-winning team, which is the number four Mobile One Ford. We have the driver, Kevin Harvick, and the crew chief, Rodney Childers. We will open up to questions for our race winners, and we're going to start up in the press box. Uh, I have a question for Kevin. First of all, congratulations, Wolfgang Monzer, Rennsport Press Agency from Germany. You dominated the majority of the race, and it looked relatively, for me, sorry to use this word, relatively easy, how you were chasing through the field like a hot knife through butter. Nevertheless, when, was there a scary moment when uh, shortly before the end of the race, the last caution came out, and you were a little bit under panic maybe to lose the race? Well, I mean, you never want to you never want to lose those types of days. Um, you know, obviously Blaney had a had a good restart, and we were able to get back by him. And and at that particular point, I was like, we're not taking the bottom anymore. We're going to take the top. And and 
see what happens. And obviously, it worked out worked out a little bit better. Um, you know, having the offense there of, of being on the outside and, and the side draft. You know, after you get past the start finish line, and you know, it's um, it's nice to see the the second groove was was rubbered up as as much as it was, and and so it's um, you know wound up making the pass on on the top there. So, you know, for whatever reason. Um, you know, we, we've, we've run well on the old style racetrack and the new style racetrack, um, you know, since I've been at Stuart Haas Racing. But for whatever reason, since they've repaved the place, I mean, it's just been uh, lights out for us. I feel like we've, we could have won every race here uh, with, with the new pavement. So it's, um, it's been interesting to, to see how it's changed and how much it's, you know, kind of come around to the things that, that we do with our cars. And, and um, you know, today was, was one of those days that just, Went, was there with the speed, but everybody executed well, uh, whether it was, you know, on pit road or the pit box or, you know, late there with the restarts um, and made it happen. So it's, it's a good time of year to, to have all that, that come around. We're going to come over here to the left to Mark, and then we'll go to Bob. Mark here. Mark here. I'm just looking for I'm just looking for Jim. Mark. Oh, now we really got it. Uh, Mark, <laughs> Mark Darrell, PRN. Question for both of you. Same question. You guys have been great all year long, speed at, at just about every type of racetrack. How does it feel for both of you to make it pay off with a spot at Homestead and a chance to win the championship? Well, I mean, really, that's that's what you race for, to, you know, to try to get yourself in position to, to get into the playoffs and then uh, position yourself to have a chance to, to get to Homestead. So it's not easy, um, you know, this time of year just because of the fact that you know, there's there's everybody's throwing everything that they have at it, and all the all the notes and all the all the things that you've done all year are compiled into uh, the the cars that you have uh, on the racetrack, and and you know it's it's tough to uh, you know to to win races at at this point in the year, and and so to to get to victory lane, and that's that's our goal. I mean, that's how you control your your destiny the most is is to get to victory lane instead of counting your fingers and toes, um, you know, trying to figure out what you need to do. It's 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 Guaranteed, if you if you go to uh, to victory lane and, and you're still in it, so um, you know th these guys have have been in these types of positions before when we when we haven't had points and and put themselves um, you know in scenario we've put ourselves in scenarios to where we've had our backs against the wall and and had to prepare at a high level and and that's really what we've done all year and so when you do that day after day after day and that preparation takes another step it's a it's a pretty refined step of, of details that that goes along with it so it's um it's fun to see uh, the whole day come together we've had a, a lot of really fast cars in in the playoffs here it's just the, you know, the days haven't come together and, and sometimes you go through phases like that and, and luckily we've scored a lot of stage points and and kept ourselves in the game and and that's that's what you got to do just hang around um survive in advance yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like he covered most of it there. I mean, <clears throat> you know, it's just nice to see the, the hard work pay off. You know, you see everybody's, you know, everybody working so hard at the shop and the engine shop. And, um, you know, I feel like all year long there's been those goals there of winning races and making it to Homestead. And, um, you know, it's just it's just nice to see that execution of, of all the hard work paying off, not only for the four team, but to, to see the other three cars up there running good too. Uh, that, that says a lot about our company and, and everything we have going on. We'll go to Bob and then up to the press box. Bob Pocker, ESPN. Uh, Kevin, if you were not able to catch Ryan after he passed There's you on no the... ifs, Bob. Well, facts are facts. Well, the facts are is that was damn hard to pass, it looked like out mm -hmm. there. And if you, so my question is, were you concerned that as hard as it was to pass that you wouldn't catch him and this race just turned into a told tr track position race and what does that say um you know i you know i look at i look at the i look at the facts and and we were able to work our our way through the field today and and um you know a lot of tire strategy and a lot of things happened today that that you know turned into a track position style race but in the end four tires were faster than two tires um you know it took a it took a little bit to pass our money spot was in the middle of one and two and and he hit the apron down there and and we didn't and we were able to to get by based upon practice. You know, his car was was really fast for the for the first five laps, and and he could make really good lap time. And and then it was just about keeping the pressure on him to to try to keep him from um, you know hitting his marks. And and he wound up um, you know missing his marks. And and luckily that was a lap that I hit mine. So 
you know, it's, um, you know, look, you know, repaves are, repaves are difficult. Um, you know, I think they've put in as much effort here as, as anywhere that, that we've gone. And, and two years in a row, we've won a race on the, on the high side. So, you know, it's, um, it, it's just one of those things where you just have to give it time. And, and it's, a, it's a really fast uh, racetrack that, that uh, they came and changed the tires from the first race. So we, we kind of fixed that problem, um, you know, from the tires blowing out and everything that we had happen uh, in, in the spring race. So, you know, it's, it's just a, a scenario where you have, to, you have to deal with the circumstances that you're, that you're dealt. And, and today we had a, we had a fast car, and, and our car turned well all weekend, and, and we were able to, to make passes. And I feel like we've, we've been able to do that really in all three repave races here. I feel like we could have won every one of them. Um, we didn't win the spring race here, and, and we made a lot of mistakes on that particular day, and, and today we didn't. We're going to go to Jim in the press box, and then Jessica and Jerry. JimUtterMotorsport.com. Kevin, you mentioned uh, after the race about five years of winning cars at Stuart Haas Racing along those lines. This will be the fourth time in five seasons that you'll have the opportunity to compete for the championship. When you made the change to uh, join the organization, could you have ever envisioned having this sort of opportunity? And what does it say for the organization that you've been able to have that opportunity to virtually every year you've been there? Well, here's here's my reality check. Jimmy Johnson hasn't won a race this year, and 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 isn't isn't uh, you know king of the mountain. So, you know, when when that type of stuff happens, and and you see scenarios like that, you have to be real with yourself to to say, you know, these are these are scenarios that you better enjoy, because they probably won't last forever. And and right now, you know, we've we've been fortunate to um, you know to have been in this position for the last five years, and and. Um, you know, we've capitalized on a lot of race wins, a championship, and, and put ourselves in position to, to win a few, few other championships, and, and you know, it just didn't didn't all work out. So, you know, you need to you need to capitalize on every moment, um, on every fast car, on every chance you have to to win a championship, because at some point there's going to be some some tougher times in there. And I think, you know, for for our organization, it's it's uh, rather unique because since I started. Um, we've been through a few drivers. Uh, we've been through a few crew chiefs on the other cars, and, and I think you know our team has has been kind of that that rock that that sets the foundation at, at Stuart Haas Racing. And, and you know, I think as you've seen the, the change to Ford, which everybody thought we were crazy. Um, you know, I think you know the the bottom line is we've got more resources and and more things that we can keep within our own walls. Um, and I just I don't believe that I don't believe we've reached the potential of of where we can be. Um, but I think you see the, um, you know, the progress of, of things that have happened when you see how all four cars are running, and that's that's not easy to do, and that, that says a lot about a lot about the company, a lot about the a lot about the the people that, that put these cars together on a week to week basis because it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of detail, and a lot of people and a lot of money, um, you know, to do that, and, and they they they're doing it with multiple teams as as you see those four teams, uh, you know, in the final eight here, so. That that to me is is pretty telling as as to where we are as as a company and and you know hopefully we can keep progressing forward and you know keep all the things that we're doing within our within our own walls and and not have to share it with anybody else. Before we continue, I just want to check: Does anybody have another question for Rodney before we go back to Kevin? We'll go here to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Rodney, um, beginning of the race. The 48 had to go to the rear because NASCAR stated it had incorrectly informed the team of that because NASCAR assumed NASCAR made the made the incorrection that the 48 had failed three times inspection instead they'd only failed twice. And what I wanted to ask you is Chad kind of talked about he said it, it's become more and more difficult to have kind of a lines of communication with the tower when as a team you have a question or dispute of an infraction. You've been in this long enough. How have you seen that progress? And is there a way to have a better lines of communication to where there's a question, a dispute, that something can be resolved in a, in a quick fashion, potentially? Yeah, you know, I don't know what happened or their situation. Um, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I feel like things are really good right now, and, and the communication that we have with um, with all those people 
seems to be pretty open and, and um, I don't know really how that could have happened. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't know the situation or anything like that and I would hate to speak about it, but uh, overall I think the, the communication is really good right now. We'll go to Jessica. Jessica Ruffin of NASCAR.com. For both of you guys, we saw a lot of playoff drivers and teams just having all kinds of mistakes and loose wheels and things like that, plaguing them throughout the night. Some of the wheels turned out to be actual loose wheels, and some of them just turned out to be some sort of vibration or something else going on. Why do you think we saw so much of that today, and how difficult is it to tell an actual loose wheel apart from just something else? Yeah, you know, that's difficult um, because, you know, a lot of times in, in this weekend, especially the, you know, one set to the next, the, the tires, one set of tires would run perfectly fine and smooth. The next set you'd put on and, and they would vibrate like crazy. And we, 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 we experienced that all weekend. So, um, you know, we experienced that at Talladega. To me, that's a Goodyear problem. You know, it's not something that every team just magically has loose wheels and, and has, has things go wrong. So, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, you know, there, there's some, some issues that, that come with the tires, in my opinion. We're going to go to Jeff to wrap it up with Rodney so we can get him back to the car. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. Rodney, at this point, I mean, I just don't – who's going to beat you guys aside from, yourself, from yourselves? I mean, it's like you, there was the big three for so long, and technically they're still there, but – you guys are speed-wise ahead of the Toyotas at this point. I mean, is it? Do you view it as like you guys? If you go out and execute at Homestead, you're going to take it. Yeah, I mean, Homestead is a little bit different of a of a racetrack. Um, you know, the setups that you run at Homestead aren't like uh, coming here to Texas or Kansas. You know, you can't just apply the same thing that you run over and over and over all year. So, um, yeah, there's there's changes there that sometimes some guys hit on it and sometimes they don't. Uh, I feel like, you know, as a team, we've been really strong down there. I felt like last year going into Homestead, we didn't have the cars to, to run for a championship, and we almost ran with them. So, um, you know, overall, I think we have good cars right now. Everybody's done a great job. And it's just going to come down to, to executing and, um, you know, doing the best we can on pit road. And I think, um, you know, Kevin hit that on the head. It's like those guys did a great job today. That's something that we've had a lot of um, – adversity through with some with some things and and those guys have worked really really hard to get better and and um it was nice to see that today all right ronnie congratulations thanks for joining us good luck in miami thank you we'll get back to questions for kevin we're going to go up here to jerry fraley then to janine and then jerry jordan oh, jerry fraley i'm sorry thank you sorry excuse me uh jerry fraley dallas morning news kevin does this allow you now to start tomorrow to focus on homestead and if so is that an could that be an advantage when you get there? I feel like that would be letting everybody down. They've already put a you know a lot of effort into um, Phoenix and and everything that that they want to do there. And and th that car was th those two cars are prepared just like every other week. And and so you know showing up and kind of giving a lackluster performance at Phoenix would would probably not be fair to the guys um, that that have put so much time and effort into putting those cars together and, and on the racetrack. So, um, you know, our goal is to is to go there and, and try to win the race, and, and hopefully, uh, um, you know, we can do that. And if not, then we'll load it up and, and go to Homestead and, and see what we can do there. We'll go to Janine. Janine Cloud with Skirts and Scuffs. Um, I heard somebody on the radio describing the track as being sort of like a, a short track, the way it run, it's running right now just on a, a big track the with the way that the line is and and you get a single groove at some point and you kind of got to move somebody out of the way um how would you assess it i don't know that i would assess it like a short track I, going through three and four when you lift barely out of the throttle and put it right back on the floor i've never been to a short track that's like that but you know it's uh, it's a very it's very line sensitive um you know as far as as far as that goes and, and i feel like the you know, there's a few small characteristics to it that are very, really almost similar to the, to the, some of the characteristics that it used to take to run the bottom here in the past uh, with the old style racetrack. Um, but, you know, really the, the key to, to 
running fast here is getting through the middle of one and two and being able to consistently keep your car turning through one and two. I feel like everybody can kind of manage their way through through three and four. Um, but if you're gonna if you're gonna win the race, you you need to be able to you know turn through the through the center of the corner in, in one and two lap after lap. I'll go to Jerry Jordan. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires on PRN. Uh, you won your championship. You went to Phoenix and then you know won there and did a walk off. But when we talked a couple weeks ago, you called your shot for this track. What was it about Texas that you thought you could? This would be the, your better shot than to win at Phoenix. And do you go into Phoenix with the? Yeah, I just I, I you know I think as a group we just felt like that that this racetrack has been since the repave has just been really really lights out for us, um, and just felt comfortable about where the where the speed of the cars were on a mile and a half racetracks and and coming here, um, you know just just felt like in the spring we we did what we did today, but we 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 got behind we got a lap down we you know made some mistakes and. You know, had all kinds of problems on on pit road, and and you know, battled back and still almost won the race. So you know, we've we've been able to to figure out how to pass. Uh, we've been able to figure out how to keep our car turning, and and it just for whatever reason, just you know, feel really good about you know the things that happen for us at at, at this particular track since they've redone it. We swing for the fence every week. <laughs> That's the only way you can control anything is to win. So. You know, it's um, you know when when everything's going like it is. If you if you come in just thinking that you're, and especially this time of year, if you if you don't think that you're going to that race to win, somebody else is going to beat you because you know that's that's what it takes. And when you go to Homestead, you know you're going to have to win the race most likely. I mean, every every year the champions won a race, so um, you have to have a winning mentality to to approach the week. I'm going to stay over here to the right and then go to Dominic and Bob. Don Hall, Track Smack Radio. Kevin, uh, we watched you walking up for driver intros, and there was a group of kids, young kids, right on the way. You stopped, took time, signed autographs with them, uh, even kind of talked to them just for you know a minute or two, and the faces just lit up on them. And then your post-race celebration, of course, uh, with the young man and giving him the flag. Is it something now, maybe as a father, are you appreciating and Absolutely. looking at things differently as far as you know these young fans and, and what even just saying hi to a young kid, what it can do? for someone that, you know, maybe it's their first time to a racetrack or something. Well, you know, I think that the impact that you have on people, you sometimes forget and all the things that you do. I like kids. Um, I'm not necessarily thrilled about, you know, all the um, adults cramming their stuff in there over the top of a kid's head. And I, I, I like to go out of my way to, you know, to, to try to talk to the kids and, and um, it's like the, the, the group of kids that you're talking about, the, the first kid that I signed an autograph for, um, you know, it was yes, sir, no, sir. And I told him, I said, now, if you do anything in life, just try to have manners because most people, especially around here, uh, that, that aren't the kids don't have manners. And, and that to me, um, you know, is something that, you know, if you can help the parents reinforce something that, that they're doing at home and the, the mom patted him on the back and said, see, I told you those manners would pay off for you. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, it's, um, you know, afterwards that, that, that kid that that we took a selfie with, he was kind of getting shoved around in the in the scrum up there in the, in the grandstands, and he had his phone hanging out, and I you know I had the security guard grab him, and he grabbed him, and I put, picked him up over the fence, and and um, you know so that's a, that's a moment that that uh, you know that that kid will never forget, and he went off with the checkered flag and a selfie on the racetrack. So I thought about taking him to Victory Lane, and I'm like, you know what? I don't know that his parents will know where he's at. <laughs> that probably won't be the right thing to do. So. I didn't put him in the car, but, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you take some grief, and, and we actually had this conversation two weeks ago on the radio show. A fan called in, and he was at a football game, and he said, man, those, those guys never stop to sign autographs for nobody. I'm, I'm like, look, man, I said, it's impossible. We're at work. We're trying to go from point A to point B. Um, you know, I try to go out of my way for the kids, um, you know, and then, and then you know, you do the best that you can walking from, from where you're going to – to the things that you're doing I did I think I did seven appearances this morning bef before the race started and you know there's some people that, you know that are mad as you're getting in your golf cart trying to go to the next one you got five minutes to get to and, and I think sometimes people just don't understand that, that that you have a lot going on and we do the best that we can but there's no sport that's more open than this one 
Um, you know, there's no sport that has more access. There's no sport that has a chari- more charitable feel. Uh, well, I shouldn't say feel. There's no sport that does more for charities and supports each other and supports causes. And, and you know, you look at the Speedway Children's Charities, every community that these racetracks from SMI that, that these racetracks sit in, they're making a multi-million dollar impact on, on these charities as you go from, from race to race. And, and you look at the driver's charities and the things that, that we do off the racetrack, there's none of them that even come close. And, and then you look at the fan access and the things that you do. So I like kids. And, and um, you know, if it was, uh, you know, it's just, a, it's, just a, it's, just a, it's just something that I, li- I, I would rather do that than sign, you know, 30 sweaty guys um, autograph. I'm sorry, sweaty guys, but I'd rather, I'd rather sign the autographs for the kids. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just weird when you're, you know, I understand that I have a lot of fans uh, that are all ages, but I have more fun signing the kids' autographs, and, and I'm not going to apologize for that. But you know, it's just it's just more fun because it just feels more genuine. Um, and that kid is, you know, he's looking right through your eyes and, and thinking, I can't, I don't even know what to say because you know sometimes you know, I had idols and heroes when I grew up, and and if you can actually speak to them and have a moment, and then next thing you know, you know that kid's going to remember that he's going to when he's. 40 years old, he's going to grab a kid and put his arm around him and, and take a selfie with him or whatever they're doing in 40 years. And, and you know, those are, the, those are the types of scenarios that you want to have an impact so that it has another impact somewhere down the line because of, of that, that type of scenario. As you can tell, I, I, have, I like that stuff. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Dominic and then Bob. Dominic Aragon with the Racing Experts. So just this year, eight wins you've passed now. Bobby, Bobby Isaac, Tim Flock, Mark Martin, and Bill Elliott on the all-time wins list. I'd just like to get your thoughts on passing all those guys. Yeah, you know, I, you know it's obviously, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's not something that I really ever thought I would do. Um, I don't look at that list very often because I'm scared to look at it because it might stop. Um, I'm kind of weird about that stuff, but you know, I know Bill was was uh, the last one that we were we were tied with, and and you know, to to know what what Bill has done and meant to this sport, and and hopefully you can you can leave some you know some sort of impact on the, on the sport that that some of those guys have have left, and feel like things are are going well, and and I'm enjoying enjoying um, you know the the things that are that are happening, but you know, I, I like being around my team. Um, I like being around my guys and, and, you know, just being a part of the sport. You know, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of people that have, that have come and gone in the sport and, and hopefully, hopefully there'll be a few people that remember you, you know, 10 years down the road. We'll go to Bob. Bob, you got another question? Yeah, I do. Bob Pocker, CSPN. Um, Comparing the team roster now compared to Daytona, there seems to be about four or five different changes. A couple of guys on the road crew, a couple of guys on the pit crew. I'm just curious where you see team chemistry right now and how much team chemistry do you need at Homestead? Um, you know, it's um, there's a lot of scenarios that you guys have no idea about, um, you know, with those with some of those roster changes. I think there's only one that was actually a change. Um, you know, there's been some some scenarios and issues and and, and things that have that have happened with some of those guys personally that we've had to find some, you know, some guys to, to fill in temporarily. So um, some of it inspiring, and and you know you you, you want to go and, and do the things that it that it takes to uh, you know to 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 fulfill those situations of, of choices that 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 some of those guys made that didn't make that changed their lives in directions that they didn't want to go. So. Um, there's really only one change that was that was made. The rest of them are kind of filling in for scenarios of of life. Come over here to Mark to the left. Mark Darrow, uh, PRN. Just sort of following up on on the win list as you keep climbing up through that and how you look at it, but don't look at it, kind of thing. At this point, you have you have had a Hall of Fame career. Do you let yourself think Let's about that? Let's wrap it up. <laughs> That's it. Didn't I quit. Say you had to end it. I'm just saying that to this point. I mean, call it into it. But do you dare let yourself think about that? I mean, the numbers don't lie. They're there. No, no. Look, I'm you know I'm I'm very fortunate of of you know where I'm at in my career and, and the things that that we've been able to accomplish and and you know I think as I'm kind of a late bloomer to the game, I guess you could say. Um, I don't even know how many how many races have we won. 
No, not this year, Bob. Take your headphones off and pay attention. 45? Okay. So we've, we're one away from, from uh, you know, winning as many races in five years as we won in 13. So, you know, like I say, I feel like I'm a little bit of a late bloomer of, of accumulating um, some of those wins and, and, you know, enjoying. I feel like I'm enjoying it more just because I appreciate how long it took to get to the, you know, the other half and, and knowing all the, all the things that you went through to, to get to that particular point. So um, it's a little bit different for me because I feel like it's not a scenario where I came in and filled in for somebody. Uh, this was a this was a scenario that was built around myself coming to Stuart Haas, and then you know we made that decision as a group with you know Tony and the executives, and then it was okay, who do you want to be your crew chief? And then we went and handpicked Rodney, and you know you've you've had a lot of people that that have been they, they came to the four car because they wanted to be on the four car, and we built the four car from from the ground up. You know we didn't have a truck, we didn't have a trailer, we didn't have a toolbox, a car a nut a bolt anything and and so when you can have that connection to, to something it's it's you know for me i love i love winning races and and that's great but i like i like seeing those guys happy and you know excited you know when when we pull into victory lane it's more it's more fun for me to see them slinging beer and and having a good time because um i know how much time and effort and sacrifice that they put in to make those cars go fast and there's just a there's a connection there and a chemistry there that that is not normal um it's not your everyday everyday chemistry with a group of guys it's a it's a special group of people um you know that that re, that really don't want to let the other the other down you know i don't want to show up unprepared because i know all of, all of them are prepared and when you when you have that from from top to bottom and everybody's everybody's got each other's back on a bad day or a good day um you know that that's the type of thing that that is really really enjoyable to me because you know at that point you're 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 doing things together that that you know not everybody gets to experience and and you're enjoying them you're actually enjoying them um you know there there's there's a lot of moments that you go through and in, in you know in my career and in life in general, you guys go through the same thing. You go through, you go through down times, and and you're just like, man, this sucks. Don't want to do this. No matter how successful it is on the racetrack or off the racetrack, you just go through. You go through funks, and and you know when you're around a group of people like that, it has a it has a way of just remotivating you and reenergizing you. And um, you know, I go through it, they go through it, and and you know, it just has a has a special chemistry that that is fun to be a part of. Do we have any final questions for our race winner? All right, Kevin, congrats. Thanks. Good luck in Miami. Thank you, guys. This is WFO Radio.